Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. In this video I'm going to talk about a little bit of a comparison between the current uh, real-time ray tracing global illumination solution that is inside Unreal Engine and the RTX GI. If you're brand new to RTX GI or if you've never used it before I have a video link in the description below showing you how to install this. Now before we get with this before we start with this video, remember the best way to support me is subscribing down below, leaving a like, leaving a comment, and share it around. That really helps me out. All right, what we're going to do here is I'm going to show you how I like this scene, and I'm going to show you the difference between the RTX GI and the regular global illumination. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of all the lights here, and we're going to start from scratch. Okay. Now I've deleted all this, all the lights, and as you can see, this is clearly real-time illumination because as I deleted all the lights, we cannot see anything right now. So I'm going to go to unlit mode so we can see what's going on. And I'm going to put my la first light in here. It's going to be a point light. And just drop it in here, and now we can get out of unlit mode. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to place this point light where these lamps are placed. That way going to simulate as is these lamps are lighting up our scene. So I'm just going to go here, make sure that is a little bit in the center. And right now this kind of illumination is a little bit too low. So I'm just going to dial in uh, 35 here. And I'm going to duplicate. Before I duplicate, uh, let me just rearrange some parameters here before we clone this light. So the first thing is because we're using real-time ray tracing, we want everything to be movable. So static and stationary is only for when you're baking light. If you're using um, real-time, it has to be movable all the time because it's dynamic. So let's see. I think that's good. But this shadow is really hard. So here's a little tip. If you want this shadow to be a little bit more realistic and not be so sharp, what you can do is go here into source radius and you can increase this up until you think it actually looks a lot better. So I'm going to leave it at two. And I'm also going to change the temperature to something a little bit warmer. So 5300. There you go. Now what I'm going to do is clone this one to the left. And I'm going to bring in these lights, which I'm also going to be doing point lights for. So clone this one over here. And this one's going to be right underneath the fan. All right, there you go, more or less. And I'm going to make one here as if this light was turned on. All right, for this light, I'm going to do 80. Uh, this, let's say this is kind of one of those really bright bulbs. And for this light, I'm actually going to diminish it. I'm going to do 25. Okay, now we have all the lights that we needed in our scene. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the post processing volume and show you how that looks like if we were going to use the ray tracing solution from Unreal. So if I enable it here, right here, it's final gather. You're going to see that it does a little bit of illumination right here. Look at this part. I'm going to change it right back just so you can see. It does just a little bit of illumination and it really lowers my performance. So this is one of those things where I think the RTX GI is really useful because it not only increases a little bit of performance, but it also brightens up the global illumination as it should without having to crank the lights as much. So I'm just going to disable this one and I'm going to bring a DDGI, which is the RTX GI pretty much. This is a volume, and I'm going to place it right here. All right, so one thing that I didn't show in the other video where I show how to install this is that the way that this works is by using probes. So I'm just going to go into my command, and I'm going to go here and show probes, and you're going to see that there's a bunch of balls inside this volume. 
Now, some are enclosed into a red circle and some are not. The ones that are in a red circle and are black, that means that they are sleeping. They're not functioning. The reason why it does that is because the probes need to be a certain distance from each other and a certain distance from the geometry. So if they are too far away from the geometry, they won't be lighting anything. They won't be doing anything. So they actually build this into the tool. So that way, if they're not doing anything, they're not active and they're not taking our performance. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to encompass this whole room with the volume. So that way, and these boxes that you see here is uh, some vo blocking volumes that I created in order for the exterior light not to hit my room. All right, so this is how you want to do your volume. These spheres that are right here, again, they're far away from any geometry, but that's okay. You don't have to make sure that every sphere is close to the geometry because they instantly will go off by themselves. And the other thing that you could do is you can actually do more than one volume when using this. And what's fun is if you move it, you can actually see some of the spheres moving themselves and you can see what I told you about the distance from the geometry uh, being in action is as soon as I move this and as soon as some of these probes get closer to the geometry this is actually going to um, turn them on and yes you can have more than one volume inside another one and it's going to be fine so I'm just really going to delete this now you're going to see that the Illumination here is a lot better compared to what we had before with just the post-processing volume. So I'm actually going to go and turn off those probes because we don't need them. And I'm going to turn off the DDGI and look at the difference. So right now this is without and this is with the RTX GI. You can see how much illuminated that is. And just for a reference, I'm actually going to go here into my post processing volume and activate the final, ga final gather. And you're going to see how that illuminates a little bit, but not so much. So again, this means that I will need a lot more lighting in my room. And the more lights you have in your room, the less performance you're going to have. All right. Another question that I got a lot on my previous video was, does this work with reflection ray tracing? And yes, it does. Look at this. We have time real time ray tracing reflections over here and there's some metal right here as you can see is has some nice reflection as well as these vases we got some nice real time refractions all around here and this works perfectly that is it for this video thank you for watching and what we're going to do in the next video is we're actually going to start bringing some mega scans into this because as you can see there is no mega scan button right here so i'm going to show you how to do that and i'm going to show you how this will work with the mega scans in a nice environment remember to leave a like if you like this video leave me a comment with your questions your suggestions for future tutorials and i'll see you in the next video